Now that we've collated all of our data in GIS, um, you'll recall that once we did have all that data put together, we actually opened up the attribute table and exported it as a DBF file, a DBase file. We can now go access that DBase file and translate it into a format that is compatible with Stata so we can look at some statistics and do some uh, additional graphing. I like to use Stat Transfer. <coughs> um, it's a pretty simple program. It's on the remote desktop. Input file type is DBase. And we can go browse for there's the Stata data that we called it. And we'll translate it into Stata data. Go ahead and transfer. I've already created it, so I'm going to go ahead and overwrite. That's fine. And we're done. So then we go and find our Stata data and open it up. You'll see the results window right here. There's a command window here. This command window up on the top left actually um, basically keeps a record of all of our commands as we go along. And then of course we have our variables window down here. And you'll notice as we scroll down, here's all of the census data that we joined. Here's the count underscore variable that was created when we did the spatial join. Um, and then of course this is a menu based system as well so you can do drop downs and, and work through the menus as well but I'm going to just show you the basic commands. Um, they're, they're actually quite intuitive. So one of the first things we need to do is create the percentage variables that we were sort of generating in GIS based on um, one value over another. So it's a pretty simple command structure. You just tell it to generate and let's do percent impoverished. So generate ppaw, that's what I call the new variable, percent impoverished, equals 100, because I like whole numbers, 100 paw below divided by pov stat. Okay, number of people below poverty divided by the total number of people we know the poverty status of. Um, and we multiply that by 100 to get a whole number. And the new variable will be called ppaw. Hit return, and you'll notice if I open up the data editor browser here that a new variable has been created, ppov, and there are the new values. And it's also been added to my variables window down here. So we can go ahead and generate uh, another uh, variable, let's say percent Latino. Um, there is a shorthand, instead of generate, you can just type gen. It's called platino for percent Latino, 100 times Latino divided by pop tot in this case, total population and hit return. Uh, some missing values are being generated because of missing data in our census tracts. Um, the other thing we need to do is create a classifying variable for our count underscore. Uh, remember count underscore is the number of facilities in each track, most of them are zero, and if we want to look at that distribution there's a simple command called tab and then count underscore. And you can see that 444 census tracts have zero facilities, 21 have one, and so on. So what we can do is generate a new variable, what we call a dichotomous variable, uh, where zero um, represents those tracts that have no facilities, and one equals um, census tracts that have one or more facilities. So we'll go ahead and generate a new variable, I'm going to call it toxic equals zero. So we've created a new variable called toxic in all of our census tracts have been given a value of zero. But now I'm going to go back and replace some of those tracks with a value of one if they host one or more facilities. So replace toxic equal to one if count underscore is greater than zero. So 42 tracks have one or more facilities in them. So now we can use that dichotomous variable to compare uh, census tracts that do or do not have facilities in them. Um, and we're just going to be comparing the um, means on variables. Um, and the easiest way to do that is to use an inferential statistic called the t-test um, to get those values. It's a pretty simple command. You just type in t-test and let's do ppov comma by toxic. Don't worry about a lot of this a lot of these results, it, it pertains to inferential statistics, um, but we're not trying to infer to a larger population. We're only interested in comparing, um, for this particular project, the actual differences in the means between um, hosting sites and non-hosting sites. So you can see here um, the grouping is by toxic. So zero represents non-toxic tracts, there's 429 of them, and on average, they have a percent impoverishment of 7.79%. 
and then one represents those that do host facilities, and on average, their mean is 14.2% impoverishment, and the difference is 6.4. If you want to look across all tracks, regardless of class classification, you see that there's an 8.3% um, mean percent impoverishment. Okay? So you can harvest those means and put them into a Word document, and you can we just click on that, we can change this to the Latino, and we can harvest these means as well and the differences. Or MHI, which we did not have to create a percentage for, it's just a straight up number. We can compare the average or mean median household income across those two types, two classifications of census tracts. So that's how you can do some of the basic statistics. If you want to do some um, graphing, um, some of the things you can do are bar graphs, just to represent these numbers. It's a pretty simple command, graph space bar, we'll look at the mean for, let's say, percent Latino over toxic. Okay. And there it is, bar graphs that represent those statistics that we just looked at. Now if you want to clean this graph up a little bit, if you were to include that, you can click on the Start Graph Editor right here, and you just do a normal click here, and you can clean this up again. Mean percent Latino. You can click down here and then right click on the zero, tick label properties, and switch this to non toxic tracks. Okay. Click on the one, tick label properties, toxic tracks. Yeah, okay. And if you wanted to just get a, a title, you just make sure you're highlighting the whole um, graph here, and then in the title, call it graph one uh, mean percent Latino by toxic status. Okay, something like that. When you're done, just click on the stop graph editor button here. It'll ask if you want to save them, you can go ahead and say yes. You'll save it to your folder. Make sure you navigate there. We'll go ahead and call this percent Latino bar. Hit save. And then when you've done that, you can actually right click and copy it and paste it into a Word document. Um, so you can have it in your actual report. That's how you do a bar graph. If you want to do a box plot, again, we can just look at um, various statistics uh, or variables, percent Latino, percent impoverishment over, let's say, toxic here. And this gives you bar graphs. And this gives you a, maybe a, a more elaborate illustration of the distribution of census tracts by these various variables. And if you want to know more about how to interpret box plots, it's pretty easy to just Google interpreting box plots and you'll find a lot of information out there. That's another way of um, representing your data. Um, one of the other things you might be interested in is looking at whether there is a curvilinear relationship that may pertain in terms of whether or not it's the poorest neighborhoods that have the highest probability or it's the working income neighborhoods. Um, sometimes we find that it's not the poorest or the lowest income neighborhoods that are most inundated, but it's the, the sort of the working class neighborhoods that are disproportionately affected. And you might not be able to necessarily see that in your maps, at least see it very easily. So one of the things we can do is look um, for that kind of curvilinear relationship um, statistically. I'll show you how we can do that. The first thing we need to do, let's use MHI as our example we need to generate a square term of MHI. So I'm just call it MHI2. We go to MHI times MHI. And then we're going to use logistic regression, which allows us to predict the likelihood of toxic status in tracks based on MHI and MHI squared. And then we can go ahead and predict Y hat, which is simply the prediction of the likelihood the probability of toxic status. And then we can graph that in a two-way scatter plot looking at y hat relative to MHI. And so what we see is that it's not a 
perfectly linear relationship, but in fact we do find that the lowest income neighborhoods have the highest probability, uh, predicted probability of toxic status, and that declines precipitously until you get to about 90,000 and starts to tail off um, as you get a floor effect going on there. Um, sometimes what you'll find is that the probability might be actually quite low in the lower income neighborhoods, but then start to go up and max out around 50,000 and then start to decline precipitously. So you never quite know. A lot of it depends on what region of the country you're in. Um, and then sort of the industrial history and the racial and immigrant history of, of a particular city. Um, so that's how you can look for curvilinear relationships. Um, so that's a lot of the um, core statistical analyses that uh, we're interested in for this particular project.